Hello everybody, I hope that you are doing very well and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where we will be together jumping into the Bitcoin chart, going over what in my opinion now does look like a very bullish chart. We are starting to break some key resistance levels and how we can envision this to push to the upside in terms of the next targets to the upside. I'd also like to be going over how we can manage the trade that we're in right now. Uh, the psychology and the importance of having a plan and then we'll end with the target so it'll kind of be in that proceedings we'll, we'll start with a review of yesterday's trade then we'll go over the importance of a plan and then we'll end with the targets of the current move um, so I hope that you enjoyed this I really hope that you can learn something from it and uh, let's get into the charts so to begin with here there's obviously a few key factors a few key things that I want to start with and I want to start off with yesterday okay so I actually want to review the price action and why it's so important to initially have that plan but then be able to react to the market and not get stuck with a bias because you know now in my opinion this is a really bullish looking chart so what happened why did my perspective change uh, as you'll know from yesterday we were to, oh I was anyway taking shorts from 38,000 to 38,200 dollars which is obviously our weekly at our weekly they're coming in at 38,200 we approached this level we came up with our bearish divergences and we obviously started to see this pullback why did price bounce from where it did well we were looking at this yesterday we obviously came back into our support trend line we came back into the cc and we also had bullish divergences so we go from a case of having bearish divergences up here to getting bullish divergences down here how did i manage my original short obviously took profit one at the first low took profit to at this low where I did close the majority of my short position what I then wanted was a rise in price to actually short basically add to my short position to ultimately try and trade it back down obviously in the end that's definitely not the case I'm fully out of my shorts and I want to explain now why that is the case but it's actually to do with this trend line uh well this resistance line that we had here as we know that this is what we were looking at in the stream as a potential resistance that was coming in at 37,720 more or less and uh, this is what I like to say. I'll give my urgent updates over on Instagram, where you'll know yesterday <laughs> I was talking about this was after the live stream had ended. I was talking about, you know, this actually is a really bullish bounce. And the, the reason why I was looking at it so bullish is because we cleared that trend line and we started to hold it as support. And that's obviously one we were pretty aware of during the stream. OK, this is actually a pretty bullish bounce, in my opinion, now. And so it's, it's removing the ego, because if I had an ego and I said, right, I'm shorting this, I'm not going to change my mind, that's set in stone, I'm not going to react, then obviously you're going to get burnt. But I had enough intuition here to at least say, you know, I'm actually wrong on this short idea now, I, I fully felt I was wrong on the idea. And that's why I wanted to do that urgent update nine hours ago telling you, I have now closed the short and I've in fact longed Bitcoin. And you know, that, that was about $37,706. Um, really simply off of the flip on this exact candle, we flipped that and I was like, okay, actually, I don't want to be in this short anymore. I can see the signs of strength here. So it goes from having an, an original plan, which was my short up here, to obviously taking profits. That's a massively important thing. I'll put the update in the next slide. And that, that's why we trade the charts, because from recognizing, okay, it's not actually so good to be in the short anymore. We're then hitting 38,300. Well, that was eight hours ago. Now we're obviously at <laughs> coming on $40,000. So it's important to. I want to just highlight here it's important to let's just write it out so i am aware that we're moving up right now but just so you are aware i am feeling pretty bullish right now so we'll get to this in a second but i just want to help you all with a few pointers here or things to bear in mind so what we can say is um how does one have an edge so what do we mean by an edge an edge in the market is something that you can rely on to give you a statistical edge over time so in trading, we acknowledge that price can go up, down, or sideways. Price is going to do one of three things all the time. And what we can say is we have to use our edge to give us a probabilistic edge in our favor. So we're not trading random results. We're not just trading, I'm just going to randomly long, I'm just going to randomly short. No, what, we, what we're saying is we have built up statistics over time that will say to us price is most probably going to do this. But what we always I just love to stress this point that we never have that 100% because trading is at the end of the day a random result. The next trade is always a random result. We can never ever say with 100% certainty what price is going to do. That's why we have to be prepared for a bullish and a bearish scenario at all times. 
and then what we will do is trade what we feel is the most probable so where we're going with this is obviously when we were down when we when yesterday we were up at 38,200 I was felt it was most probable we got a decline while we were down at the lows there I still felt it was most probable that we got a rise and another decline but where I started to feel my probabilities had changed and it was no longer likely that we were going to get a decline is really simply when we actually start to hold that resistance back as support okay then obviously we get through 38,000 we get through 38,200 and, and there was then zero 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 need to be in a short but um you know it's it's kind of this this point of how one, how does one have an edge well firstly they have to trade and record statistics so you know get a trading journal write it down in, in an excel file you know record the types of trades that you're taking again this is not for everybody but this is something i enjoy to do and then you from from recording statistics you know from recording the data you have statistics and then from those statistics you you start to form an edge you'll start to say okay i want to take this trade i don't want to take this trade uh when i lose a trade you know how can i improve it to you know increase those probabilities once again um so yeah that's obviously the first thing that's really important to recognize you have to you have to have a plan so how you know you have you have an edge in trading from firstly trading you know firstly trading and getting the experience then it's recording statistics then it's you know from those statistics forming a strategy and then from it's from the having the strategy it's sticking to the plan so it's, it is you know formulating a plan and sticking to the plan recognizing where you're wrong okay so from having a plan it also means rec knowing where you're wrong on the trade because i just want to emphasize once more if i had shorted here not taken any profits and held my short on to now obviously i'm going to be absolutely wrecked because i would have essentially traded with no plan i wouldn't have known where to take profits i wouldn't have known where to place a stop loss i would have just shorted and hoped for the best which is obviously a plan that never ever never is going to work consistently so i wanted to just start off this section with giving you a bit of an overview of why it's important to have that plan and why it's important to react to the charts and and not trade what we want okay so we don't trade what we want we don't trade and you know we don't trade our beliefs but we actually have to trade the charts so when the chart is telling us too long long when the chart is telling us to short short it's as simple as that it doesn't matter what we want we've got to trade what the chart is, is essentially telling us at the moment it's really telling us that it wants to push up when we look at the volume here we were obviously were looking at this yesterday now i was totally surprised okay because i have a lot of experience trading bitcoin and generally speaking when i see this much volume come in it does end in a you know essentially the first bounce won't work and you'll get another dip before an increase and that did not happen yesterday so this for me is was pretty was a, a unique move because of the fact we had so many longs opening on the first dip and price literally just kept going up so this is the question is is this the institutions buying that obviously we don't know but what we do know is there was hundreds of millions of dollars of bitcoin bought yesterday on that dip so somebody was buying hundreds of millions of bitcoin which is obviously yeah that, that's pretty bullish when you just simply take that at face value that's pretty bullish if someone's buying 100 million bitcoin but somebody has and that's what we can see from this volume and that's partly what another reason why okay i was thinking we might get the second dip but then when we had reclaimed resistance as support thinking to myself right you know this actually is a lot more bullish than what i anticipated and price makes its way back up so that makes makes it come up to where we are right now on the bitcoin chart then so we are 8 13 in the morning it's very early for me i just felt compelled to make this video um so where, where are we looking at now in terms of our next support and resistances so if you just clear the chart right now let's come up to the daily actually let's let's stick on the four hour chart we don't need to be on the daily we actually have a next in my opinion a key resistance of support uh, sorry support and resistance so what we're going to do is we're going to take our fibonacci from the high of the move down to the low and we have now well we have this next region of resistance and that's really coming in from about forty thousand dollars to you know this key level here in my opinion which is basically forty thousand five hundred and eighty so let's just say forty thousand six hundred dollars so we have that forty thousand five hundred to forty thousand six hundred where you have another potential potential short position here actually i'd arguably say it's forty thousand two hundred to forty thousand six hundred so you have about a four hundred dollar region which in terms of the price levels we're at now is a, is a very small percent but um 
that's the next region in my opinion where i would be i would be cautious so there's one thing that i like to i want to highlight here of how i trade as you will know back on the 27th of january we were very very bullish and buying bitcoin down here because we were at support and the way that i approach trading is when we reach our support zone i am really really bullish because what's what's happening down here if you remember on the 27th everybody was really bearish you know, a lot of people were looking at the death cross. A lot of people were saying $27,000, $20,000, which is fine. You know, maybe they had a plan and they, they had a stop loss and they moved on to the next trade when they saw the strength. But nevertheless, this was an area where I was buying each of the dips. 30K bought the dip. 30K bought the dip. 29,600 bought the dip. So if that was support where we were happy to be bullish, well, now we're coming up into resistance. Should we be happy to be bearish? Well, the way that I approach trading is yes. I acknowledge I can have a plan here that says, okay, I knew to get out my shorts here, but can I approach a new short position here? Well, the answer is obviously going to be yes, because I'm happy to be bullish at the lows and I'm happy to be cautious at least at the highs. So would I randomly long here out of FOMO? Obviously not. Where could I say I could get into a potential nice short position with an invalidation which I feel has to be above this high? And look to potentially, you know, I could potentially trade this down to maybe just $36,000. If you get into a short from $40,000 to $36,000, that's a $4,000 move. So you're not, yeah, that's a pretty nice short position. Where could we say, right, where am I right and where am I wrong? Well, where are you wrong? I feel, I feel totally honestly, Phil, if we go back above, you know, 40,300, that's, in my opinion, that would be pretty bullish. Well, actually really bullish. I, I would 100% not short it. And I would be looking up towards fifty, sixty thousand dollars So that obviously offers a really nice breakout trade. But there's no, you know, you, to, to get a breakout trade, you need to break the highs. There's no, this isn't a breakout trade here, is it? Before the highs. This is actually an area, in my opinion, to be cautious. Although, yes, it looks really bullish. I'd prefer to be cautious in this zone. Be interested in short positions because I'm risking a stop loss of like 1% and the potential downside is really great. What I can then do is potentially take a short here. If it clears the highs, close the short and take a long position. That's the way that I would approach this. Although yes, as it stands right now, I'm not in a short and I feel that this is a really bullish, this is pretty bullish in my opinion at the moment. But nevertheless, I'm still happy to be cautious at this level. I'm not just going to randomly long. Um, I'm not just going to randomly short either. Excuse me. But I am going to approach this in a way of saying, okay, you know, we're up at my resistance region. I'm, I'm happy to be cautious here. I'm happy to look for shorts. Maybe I'd like to wait for a step of confirmation. But nevertheless, when I'm down at the low of my range, I look for longs. When I'm up at the higher range, I'm going to look for shorts. We break the highs. I can really simply take a long. So that's kind of the way that I approach this. I must stress this video has no financial advice. I'm not telling you how to trade. I'm not giving you any advice at all. No advice uh, this is the way that I approach trading. So this is here. If you're here for my opinion, my perspective on the markets in a very, you know, hopefully non-emotional, you know, my, my opinions are not driven by emotions. My opinions are simply, like I'm saying here, trading the charts. So I, I trade what the chart is telling me, not what I want, not emo non-emotional, just, just really simply trading the charts. So I think that this is the way that I'm, I'm approaching it. So just a, a summary here. How long have we been going? Well, 13 minutes. Yeah, already too long. I wasn't, didn't want it to go on this long already. So really simply, I've, I've hopefully given you a perspective in this video, which is, I think the biggest takeaway here has, has to be that you have to trade your, you have to trade your chart. You have to have that plan. You have to know what you're looking for and why you're looking for it. Because if you don't know why you're looking for something, then you're essentially gambling. And you can fall into the category of being a gambler in the markets if you're not trading off of a statistical edge. So like we say, that we are the casino. So if we're the casino owners, obviously at times when we're pulling, you know, let's say we're the casino owner and we, we own the slot machines. Obviously, statistically speaking, we are going to be, as the casino, taking the majority of the money on the slot machines. But there are times where the end, you know, the other person wins and they take the jackpot. But statistically speaking, over time, we're going to be winning a lot more than we lose. And the same as in trading. We are going to be winning a lot more than we lose off of our statistical edges. But there are going to be times where we lose, which is fine. That's why we have a stop loss and an invalidation. And we'll move on to the next trade or we'll move on to the next slot pool. Because statistically speaking, 
we as the casino owners know that we win more than we lose over time and that's the way that we approach trading we're going to know each result is a random outcome but statistically speaking oh, excuse me sorry but statistically speaking over time we can say we have a higher probability of seeing this play out than this and it's as simple as that in my opinion of, of approaching trading it really not emotional you know you don't feel any emotions you don't feel euphoric when it's pumping you don't feel you know ultra bearish and fearful when it's when it's dropping i think i try and flip it and try and get bullish when it's dropping and bearish when it's rising but obviously there's a time and a place to be each sometimes when it's rising you can be really bullish and sometimes when it's dropping you can be really bearish obviously market conditions do prevail um so yeah i'm, I'm, I'm to, to summarize this i hope that the, i really do hope this has been helpful it hasn't i haven't wasted my time here I, I truly hope i've been able to help somebody so yeah my, my summary here basically is i am now out of out of all shorts um really simply i think that we are coming up to a resistance region and, and that really is from 42 40,200 to 40,600 this is a place where i'll be cautious i don't have any shorts preset but i will be open to shorting this okay if we break through that resistance personally i will be trying to trade a breakout long um and i i could imagine this pushing 50 60 thousand dollars over the next few weeks if, if that's the case alternatively we reject at those highs i'll be looking down to around 36,000. that's probably my first sort of target region well 36,660. you know that that key daily level that we had um see so yeah, that that's the way that i'm approaching the market today that's my perspectives um i truly hope that i've been able to help somebody i suppose this is the thing with the altcoins you know bitcoin up three percent you're seeing the altcoins down some of them down ten percent today so this is why i think altcoins just have to be so kept this is why i just i just personally love to focus on bitcoin well bitcoin and ethereum they're kind of the only two things i trade and i'm i'm pretty content with this but um yeah nevertheless i hope that you've enjoyed this video hopefully it's offered you a bit of a, bit of a different perspective of the charts um yeah and i i truly hope that you've enjoyed and learned something so without further said thank you ever so much that's me signing off and i'll catch you in the next video cheers and have a brilliant day thank you